then there was one. One more game in our five-game slate here at the Butler Center, St. Catherine University. For the St. Catherine MLK Classic, I'm Mike Pete, and he's Alex Nagel. We've got the Providence Academy Lions and the Champlain Park Rebels. Providence at 12-2, two-time defending Class 2A state champions. Champlain Park at 3-10, and, and they've been going through some changeover with yeah. the new coaching staff and some personnel changes yep. over the years. So Alex, it's likely going to be a Providence game as far as the favorite. What can Champlain Park do to give themselves a chance to well, get this win? <laughs> if you're Champlain Park, first off, you got to know you got to know and understand that you have more than one player than Maddie Greenway to worry about. You've got Hope Counts. You've got Ari Peterson to worry about, and uh, both Brooke Honaker and Emma Milliburn can do a lot of damage too if they're uh, left unchecked. So. You know, you got more than one player to worry about. Second, you want to try and play clean. You don't want to. You don't want to make silly mistakes out there, just turning the ball over on unforced errors. You want to play clean. And I think the th I think the third one, you're going to have to take some. You're going to have to be willing to take some risks in this game. You just are against a team like Providence Academy that has so many ways they can hurt you. We've seen what they can do with their pressure defense. So that's that's how I see things, you know, from a Champlain Park perspective. Here are the starters. Providence, same five as usual, but they have some new gold unis. It's yeah, Brooke Honaker. Yeah, I was say, I've never seen those uniforms before. Brooke Honaker, Emma Miller Burned, Ari Peterson, Hope Counts, and Madden Greenway. Champlain Park will start Olutoni, Ogunlai, Natalia Tolentino, Savannah Bologna, Naomi Krushan, and Reese Hagenbart. And speaking to Alex's point, Madden Greenway, second in the state in scoring, fifth in the sixth, sixth in steals, five 40-point games, six double-doubles, one triple-double. Hope counts as five double-doubles. Even Ari Peterson has a couple double-doubles. And Brooke Honaker passed 1,000 points earlier this season. Madden Greenway closing in on 3,000. This team is scary good. They have been really for the last four or five years you were you recall alex they upset Sauk center in 2020 but never got to finish the rest of that state tournament because of you know yeah. what yep yep madden greenway oh. hits the three to start this game right off the tip well that's uh kind of a prophetic start for uh the Lions, is it not? And you're talking about the tough assignment that awaits Champlain Park. Madden Greenway is coming off a season high 49 in the win over Edina. And right off the bat, you see what Providence Academy can do with that pressure defense. They do not back off one bit. Five to shoot. That's Crushon for three. Off the heel. Rebound, got away, Ogunle picks it up. Tolentino to Hagenbart. Three from the key, that's offline. Matt and Greenway with the rebound. Honaker, the UST track commit, misses the three. Hagenbart missed. Hope counts, recovers. Rebound ends up tipped back to Hagenbart. Honaker, all five feet, four inches, well, comes up for the block. Came from behind and did that. Madden Greenway for three. That's long. This is Tolentino. Offensive foul away from the ball. And we're talking about some of the changes. New head coach this year in Leslie Phelps. 
Ava Holman decided not to continue playing basketball. She was a 1,000 point scorer. Yeah. And that hurt the depth a bit. Naomi Krushan came over from Park Center. And now Park Center's starting to put some things together. Nice steal there. That's Krushan. Flips it over to a Gunle for the score. Tell you what, don't forget that this Champlin Park team has got a lot of speed and a lot of quickness. They can get into transition. Millerburn, the hope counts, up and in. Hope counts, the youngest of the Count sisters, Maria and Grace playing D2 at UMD. There's Hope counts with the block. Last year she got a block against Watertown Mayor in somewhat similar fashion, and their she announcer said, oh God, how demoralizing. <laughs> <laughs> That's well, probably I how I would what, feel I, if I had I to go against what, her. You talk about a <laughs> casually cruel swat. That was a casually cruel swat. Belongia to Krushan. Providence Academy ball. Krushan was trying to work along the baseline there and just simply ran out of real estate. And this team, they've had some athletes over the years. Champlin Park, maybe not household names, but even just a couple of years ago, Izzy John comes to mind, Nicole Lillard. They were a team that was in contention uh, several times. Yep. But, you know, you can yeah, see... You not know, a lot of history behind them. Despite the youth on this uh, Rebel team, you can see that their speed and quickness is going to be problematic for Northwest Suburban Conference opponents. Well, they've struggled a bit in Northwest Suburban play. They're coming off a big loss to Park Center after winning the first meeting between those two. Greenway pulls up. Can't get the bounce. Champlin Park with a 5-2 lead. Providence, or no, Providence with a 5-2 lead. Here's a three. Bullseye. Well, and, and th those are one of the calculated risks I was talking about if you're Champlin Park that you have to be willing to take. You get an open three, you've got to take it. You've got to take those chances. So Providence, the home team, they're wearing the gold jerseys. Champlin, the road team. That's usually not how it works. Here's Milliburn with the elbow J, can't get the bounce. Champlin Park's bench, Alex, I think is the loudest of any of the teams I've seen today. I think I have a hard time hearing you. 5-5 five, five the score, Krushan. Oh, what a finish. Zips down Pretty drive the along the baseline. By so, Krushan. In Champlin Park, forging out ahead here in the early going. Krushan. A cousin of Adalia McKenzie, 2021 Miss Basketball. Well, it'll be Illinois. interesting here to see what adjustments here that head coach Connor Gates decides to make here for his Providence Academy team. Crucian, whoops, there we go. Almost knocked over Alex's. Oh, that's yours. Oh, that's not my Snapple. Oh, I don't know whose that is. Uh, maybe that, oh, it was empty anyway. But Krushan likes painting all kinds of music. Planned on joining Unify Club. The breakdown book comes out before the school year, but Unify Club, that's the program that works with kids who have disabilities, special needs. I talked to Kendra Harvey on Saturday from Byron. She's also a part of Unify Club down there. And Mara Braun, I think, one of the most notable examples. Bit of a change in the Champlain Park lineup. Uh Junior guard Aaron Kalusa, number one, is in there for Champlin Park, and a steal by the Rebels. Champlin Park holding their own so far. This is what they need, being heavy underdogs here. Here's a three. That's long. That was Belongia. Kalusa almost got the rebound, and it will stay with Champlin Park. Well, I like the energy that Champlin Park is bringing to this game. In the early going, they're really playing with a lot of energy and a lot of purpose, and you have to respect that. And this is what you need. 
You can't play scared, and no, if you, you can get out, can't. if you can get an early jump, you hear this a lot, Alex, in the NCAA tournament in particular. The longer the underdog sticks around, the more confidence, the more swagger, the they more attain. dangerous they become. Exactly. I know there's a long way to go, but if you're Champlain Park, this is exactly the start you want. Ari Peterson using her length to deflect and take the pass for herself. She is not a player you want to have put her hands in the cookie jar. Brooke Honker's three goes in. You know, we've talked about her before. I don't think Brooke Honaker gets nearly the recognition she deserves. Champlin Park with the press breaker, but not the finish. Peterson, one of those double-doubles came last weekend in the win over Stewartville, and we've seen Madden Greenway execute that move once or twice. Kaluza, long two, rebound counts. Greenway. Counts out at the high post, pulls up, has some range. And a foul was committed by Hagenbart on Peterson. I've covered Providence for years, Alex. So you, of course, you and I remember the days of Ray Finley, much oh, different style ever? of play. <laughs> it wouldn't work. Hold up, 20 seconds. It wouldn't work now with the shot clock, but in all my years, I don't think I've ever seen them sport a third or alternate jersey. No. But it's, uh, it's kind of refreshing to see. I, I we, like them. I'm going to say the gold looked nice on them. Madden Greenway looking nice on that three point stroke. She just has an uncanny way of making, making it look easy, doesn't she? Well, she's only one of the fastest players ever to score 2,000 points. Champlin Park gets a couple of chances. Right. Nothing doing. Those are the kinds of shots, those second chance opportunities. And if you're Champlin Park, you've got to make those go down. Matt and Greenway to the line. Okay. Get ready. Matt and Greenway this season, 33.6 points per game, 8.1 rebounds. 6.4 assists, 4.6 steals. Had 49 in the win over Edina. Scored 60 last year in one of the games with Minnehaha. As we mentioned, five 40-point games. She had several in a row, and she had three double-doubles to start the season. And Madden Greenway has already racked up 10. Champlin Park trying to end a 10-0 run. Kaluza to Tolentino. Kendall Jackson called for traveling. And Alex, I, I know you weren't with us for the Southern Hoops Fest at Stewartville, but I'm starting to notice when you watch the highlights from the games they played this year. Yeah. Madden Greenway is drawing crowds the way Paige Beckers did. That's the block for Champlin Park's Jada Stanford, number 14. Great block there by Jada Stanford of Champlin Park. Stanford, the reserve, senior reserve uh, center or forward post on this uh, Rebel team coming in with a big defensive stop there. The crowd a bit more muted today, but the Minnehaha game, Albany, Granite City with Hopkins, wherever Madden goes, crowds are starting to follow now. Yeah. Much like Paige Beckers. Yep. Well, and that's, that, that's to be expected. 
I think in her case, and we've had some conversations with this, I have with other writers and even Madden's family, considering who her father is and how much we put into pro sports, right. I think that plays into part of it, but we've got a foul on Providence Academy. It's on McKenna Schaefer. But talking with Madden and her folks this year, I think you get the sense, and Madden mentioned this at the tip-off classic, she's really feeling like she's coming into her own now, where she yeah. feels confident that she's forging her own identity. And she right, forges like, another like highlight, yes. Like like that, you mean? Yeah, okay. I, yeah. I guess, you know what, it was my time for the reverse jinx. <laughs> 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 you got a couple <laughs> our last pair of games. And Madden, highly personable. I can't oh, go yeah, anywhere. Yeah, if yeah, I yeah. see them at a game, they're always. I mean, she's she's fun to engage yes. with. Yes. And, and well, fun and to be she's respectful. It's, and her yeah. her father has told her this piece of advice for years: stay humble. And those words have resonated with Madden yep. Greenway considerably. No three-point play, but McKenna Shaver gets the rebound. Becca Greenway for three. Bullseye. Wow. Well, there's another. Uh, Greenway that uh, we forgot to mention from the top. Oh, give Beckett a little time. She's only a right. seventh grader, Alex. Schaefer with the rebound. She's logged a few minutes this year. Madden. Goodness gracious. Once again, <laughs> maneuvering you know, the you, lane. With we're not such even precision. at the halfway point, and I'm already running out of superlatives from Maddie Greenway. Timeout, Champlin Park. Well, one of my colleagues, Eric Bugard, has come up with all sorts of them, but I think he's used up all the M's in doing so, <laughs> all the M adjectives. I've just said this. She is a special player, much like Paige, Olivia yeah, Olson, and, yeah. and Taylor Hill, if you go back a few years ago. But the humility that I've seen from her and Ari, and they both share the same background, yeah. having NFL dads, that could be a little overwhelming. I heard stories about the irritation that Madden would feel sometimes because people would say, oh, you're Chad's daughter. Of course you're good. Uh, hearing Madden say, I'm developing my own identity, my own yeah. character now, yeah. hearing her say that I think is refreshing and speaks a lot to her humility. Yeah. She's talented, but she's not letting it get to her. Right, right. And I, I tell you, for somebody her age, to be able to do that and to be able to do that with confidence uh, speaks volumes about how intelligent she is. And there's a saying, you can't control who your parents are. Right, right. But you can still make an impact no matter who they are. Because in my time, Alex, we've got free throws coming for Champlin Park. I've covered the offspring of several notable names. Sierra Lumpkin, her father was Sean Lumpkin, who played for the New Orleans Saints for five years. Yep. As we have Belongia at the line. Same in the basketball world. You can't get so caught up in results or who your parents are that you lose sight of the fact that it's your journey as Belongia gets Two points in reverse, missing the free throws and coming up with a second chance play. Greenway takes a slide. Schaefer, three ball, corner oh. pocket. McKenna Schaefer, one of the uh, forgotten elements, I would guess. That last bucket for Champlain Park, by the way, broke what was a 17 0 run. Yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's how it's you 20 get, 2 right now. That's how you get separation if you're Providence. Here's a three for Champlin Park, and Belongia answers back. She's got eight points. Trying to give Champlin Park a spark. She is her leading score at 12.3. But it's little things like that for Champlin Park that can at least give you the confidence in the back of your mind to keep fighting, no matter how you know desperate or how bad things look. You gotta keep fighting. You gotta, you gotta keep competing. You gotta keep playing. Crushon maintains the dribble. Hope Counts got the last bucket for Providence. And Alex, it's a little surprising. I've looked at Hope Counts' numbers. 
they seem to have ticked down a bit considering her stature, her influence down low. I'm a little surprised she hasn't scored more often, but she's fine with her role. And yeah. And she's getting noticed. She's getting a few looks. So oh, yeah. Hope's going to have a bright future ahead of her, too. Belongi is three, goes off the back iron. Rebound is snagged by Tolentino. Whoa. Wow. Gave Madden a push. More like a shove, but we play on. Belongi is three, doesn't go in. Of course, Madden Greenway, she can take contact and keep <laughs> on trucking. She doesn't go down easily. Back at Greenway. Got in a little bit of a fix there, but she got herself out of it. Madden to Hope. Blocked by Mariah Pates. Providence Academy ball. You know, and I think when you talk about Madden too, you, you know, as you, you know, edge closer and closer to what will ultimately be her, you know, big decision on where she commits <laughs> to. Um, She's I, done. Uh, I just shake my head. I'm going to say this again, Alex, so be ready. Madden just made lemonade out of lemons. That she did. No <laughs> argument for me. She, with a little help from one of her teammates. 29-12. Madden Greenway's got 16 already. Here's Tolentino, who well, thinks of nice the runner. That's a nice response by Champlain, though. Champlin's getting a few buckets to go down. The problem is they can't get a stop defensively. That is an illegal screen. Hope counts is saying what? And it's going to be a big one for Madden because every single school, just about the major ones in D1, have given her an offer. I don't know if UConn has yet or LSU maybe, but everyone else has and... It wouldn't surprise me if and the others had haven't extended I guess, one. I guess the point I was trying to make, hold on here just a second. We got a little pinball action. Millerburn picks it up and will shoot two. I, I guess the point I was trying to make is that wherever she ultimately decides to go to, she'll be a great fit. What gives you that idea? Why do you think that is? <laughs> I, you, you, Alex, you might have to convince me. I'm not entirely sure. Miller burned at the line, and she would be something of a youthful wonder herself if she wasn't playing on Providence. She did play the guitar when she was younger, so uh, I wonder if she still strums a tune or two. Well, she strums a couple of points, and Providence leads 31-14. Providence Academy, they've scheduled tough. Crushan swings out. Three is short. Champlin Park able to save it. Well, I remember asking Madden's parents when Iowa made her an offer because that's where Chad and Jenny right. both attended. And they said, we had our moment in the sun. Here's a three for Champlin Park. We had our moment in the sun. We're happy to see our kids get there. So they would love it if she went to Iowa, but it sounds like they'll be happy no matter where she goes. Hope counts to Ari Peterson. Couldn't quite get the roll there. Crushan with the rebound. The runner and shooting free throws will be Olutoni. And you know, Ogunle. too, with the impending realignment that's going to be taking place, um, you, you could see schools like, you know, UCLA, USC, Washington, Washington, you know, Washington or Oregon, being a choice. I mean, so I mean, there's there's compelling reasons you could make for you know whatever when you look at a number of schools. Tony Ogunle averaging just a couple points per game. Came in midway through the year. And 
And Ogunle. Splits. Here's Schaefer out at the high post. Hands it off to Milliburn who pulls up. A little long. Schaefer. She's making a few plays. Beckett Greenway. Schaefer, Peterson, the Hezzy. And the flip. Did that in traffic too. Major traffic. Ari Peterson's on the board. Matt and Greenway checking out for a moment. Crushan on the drive and the finish. I like how she uses the glass on that. I have to imagine Naomi learned a thing or two from her big cousin Adalia. Ogunle with the steal on Beckett Greenway. Loose ball. Jackson left that short. Here's a three from Champlin Park. Loose ball again, but Ari Peterson takes care of business. Becca Greenway pulls up from 16. That's short. Schaefer launches the three. Long. Another offensive rebound to Becca Greenway. In a bit of trouble, gets out of it. Ari Peterson on the line. Providence Academy out of fouls to give. That's on Honaker. Honaker, believe it or not, Alex, at this event last year, Providence played in this against yep. St. Croix Lutheran. Laura Hauge inadvertently elbowed her face into Honaker and knocked out a tooth. Ouch. She and Laura both had to get stitched up by the trainer. And this year, last season, I should say, at the breakdown photo shoot, the two had a little fun with that. I'm glad a year later they were able to make light out of a not so great situation. One and one for Champlin Park. Rebound. Nothing there. Hagen Bart. Champlin Park got a few chances there and nothing to show for it. Madden Greenway back in the floor. Pulls up. Swish. That's Brooke Honaker. Champlin Park looking for the transition score. And they don't get it. Champlin Park getting opportunities. He just can't finish. Oh, Madden Greenway breaking oh. ankles. Maybe not quite an ankle breaker, but she put Naomi Krush on. On the Fritz, on the other end, Reese Hagenbart scores for Champlin Park. What you were saying, Alex, earlier about you being able to share a laugh, you have to remember, between high school and AAU, a lot of these players get to know each other. Right. Oh, sure. In basketball and other sports. So you get a lot of extended families. Laura yeah. Hauge, for example, yeah. and Matt and Greenway, both on the same North Tartan team last year. Yeah. Ari Peterson and Adele Chingamiri, AAU teammates at North Tartan. So there's a lot of extended connections. And I don't see a whole lot of grudges. Man Greenway missing the front end. Three straight double-doubles to open the season, Alex. That was something for the number 17 oh. athlete in her class. Ooh. The steal, the hoop, and the foul. It just, you just watch her, I mean, do what she does. I mean, she has so many different things in her repertoire. It's just, it just boggles one's mind almost. I've seen a lot out of Madden, and I think that, wow. She pulls up. Well, that would have been another dazzling entry had she made the four-point play there, but Providence is up by a bundle, 40 to 19. Pates. Unable to get the short range hook. Milliburn, coast to coast, too strong. Pates with the rebound.
Pates looking for the post up on Peterson. No, instead, passes out. And Shannon Healy got the rejection momentarily. Madden Greenway with numbers finds Shannon Healy, and she's blocked. You have to like the spunk out of Champlet yeah, Park. Yeah, you do. You do. You really Offensively, do. Offensively, they don't have the poise, the no. stoicness that Providence Academy does, at least well, not now. Well, the other thing I noticed, we've noticed. Whoa, that doesn't happen often. Greenway threw it right into Crushon's hands. Naomi's got plenty of speed. It's, it's situations another, like this. Yes. We've seen them get numerous opportunities, but it's those small things, those little things that they've got to work on and practice to perfect. You know, That's and, where and, they and have, then yes. translate that into a game situation. That's where they have been impeded. Yeah. A lot of missed looks down low. Reminds me of the Holy Angels. Right. You, you see game. some raw. You see some raw talent there. You see potential. It's just that that potential has got to be developed. They don't quite have that English that we've seen right. out of the likes right. of Greenway, who has the ball. Millerburn for three. Bullseye. Yeah. Forty-three nineteen, Providence Academy with a whole lot of points. Pates draws a foul on Peterson. She'll shoot two. Mariah Pates. Nice job by Pates. I tell you what, she doesn't back down from anybody. Well, she will be playing at the next level. She will be going to St. Francis next year. And she is a big fan of Christmas colors, red and green. Oh. It's a split for Pates at the line. Honaker, three ball. Madden Greenway showcasing her vertical. Had a lot of traffic, though. And then Madden Greenway fouls Pates. More free throws coming. Pates really likes the red and green. And I think of some of the Champlain Park names to come through. Alicia Bates, Michaela Count. Yeah. Maybe not the biggest names, but they were solid. And Izzy John decided not to play basketball, but she's a sophomore at Harvard. So a lot of big names to come through. It's an empty possession, but an offensive rebound for Belongia will keep it on the Champlain Park side. Tolentino's three, short. Peterson gets the rebound. Providence Academy. Let's see if they can tack on some more buckets before the half ends. They already have a commanding lead. Peterson, mid-range. In and out. It will stay with Providence. We mentioned the championship they won with Ray Finley. Yep. They've won the past two state titles in Class 2A. The year before that, 21, they got second to Albany, the team that beat them back in December. One of the two to beat them. But it's an open field in 2A after a crazy December. Three-second call. So Albany beat Providence Academy, and then at the Granite City Classic, Mountain Iron Buell beat Albany. Minnehaha Academy, they're right there. Yep. And those three figure to be the front runners in Class 2A. Who will win it? Good question. <laughs> Champlin Park, they're in Section 5, a section that looks like is Maple Groves for the taking. I haven't seen enough from the other schools to suggest. Although we've, I've said that before myself more than once. Well, Roseville not in the group this year, but Jada Stamford is there to clean up that mess for Champlin Park. Greenway guarded heavily. Miller burned short on the three. Ari Peterson skies up. Madden Greenway a little short on the reverse. 
Greenway's production has cooled a bit in the last few minutes. As crazy as it might seem to say, Alex, I feel like Champlain Park, if they were more efficient finishing shots, this game would be a lot closer. They've done a lot of good things. They just yeah. had trouble finishing down low in particular. Tolentino for three. Millerburn with the rebound. Back at Greenway to Honaker. Spots up the three. Short. Rebound is going to be tied up. And Providence Academy with the arrow, 31.8. 25 on the shot clock. Shot clock will reset to 20 because of the hell ball. Greenway wants the three. That is a loose ball foul. It's on Ari Peterson, so two free throws here for Champlin Park with both teams in the penalty. Second on Ari. And I've noticed they got some of the St. Catherine regular staffers here as yeah. the yeah, as a, women's team is yep. preparing for their game against St. Mary's a little later tonight. This is Savannah Belongia. She's got eight points. Splits at the line. Forty-three twenty-three. Providence can hold for one more, and it looks like that's what they'll do. Matt and Greenway always calm, always in control. Is it Matt and Greenway time? Oh. Not quite. Ari Peterson will go to the line. Ari Peterson logged a few minutes, more than a few as a seventh grader, moved into the starting rotation this year. Hard to believe that she's just an eighth grader. Well, Providence Academy not afraid to embrace their youth. Whether it was Madden Greenway, Emma Miller burned, Ari Peterson, and now Becca Greenway, they have fielded many seventh grade sensations. And Ari, now an eighth grader, has a little more of that polish about her. She'll take a split at the line here. And that should be the end of the first half. Well, Providence got off to a fast start. They cooled off a bit, but they still hold a commanding 44-23 lead at halftime. Yeah, this game's kind of... Uh pretty much followed the lines that we thought that it would. But again, I still like the spunk and the competitiveness of this Champlain Park team. You know, they haven't backed down and they're still fighting. So let's see if they can do some more of that in the second half and perhaps tighten this one up a bit. One more half to go in the 2024 rendition of the St. Catherine Martin Luther King Classic. Providence Academy leads 44-23 over Champlain Park. Twin City Sports Broadcasting, and a whole lot more. That's what you get from TSB Television. We provide long-lasting digital coverage of your favorite athletes from the preps to the pros. Dazzling moves. Holloman, good if it goes. Yes! Game winners. James. She's in trouble. Finds James. Toss shot! It goes in! And everything in between. Before we let you go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Oh. Oh, I don't know. It put me on the spot there. If you want to connect with our audience, visit us at patreon.com slash TSB television or sponsor our coverage through PayPal and Cash App. Thank you for watching.
Mike Pete and Alex Nagel back here at the Butler Center, St. Catherine University, the final leg of the 2024 St. Catherine MLK Classic. Providence Academy leads Champlain Park 44-23. Madden Greenway had a fast start, and that might be an understatement. Cooled off a bit late, but she leads with 21 points. Almost outscoring Champlain Park by herself. Savannah Belongia leads the Rebels with nine, but Alex, I think this game highlights the difference in trajectory and level and poise. Providence Academy, yeah, they tapered a bit, but they've been doing a much better job finishing overall. Champlain Park, they've had their chances, but they've left a lot of points empty down low. Yeah, yeah, they, you know, you look at all the opportunities that Champlain Park had in this first half alone, Mike. I mean, had they been able to cash in on most of those, we'd be looking at a much smaller gap right now in the score than what we are. But on a more positive note, we've seen that Champlain Park, you know, they're not backing down by any means. Uh, they're out there competing, they're working hard. They just got to polish up some stuff. You can't play scared. Right, exactly. Because but, otherwise you're going to be in for a long game. Right. But for Providence, this seems like another marker in what has been a terrific campaign. We're not going to have lengthy winning streaks or undefeated teams like we have in the past, but Providence taking care of things so far. And if you're Providence, that's what you got to do as the favorite. Emma Milliburn takes the ball away. A little more pinball action. And Champlin Park swipes it back. Crushan. Finds a Gunle. Krushan, Hagen Bart tried to get the post up. Another loose ball. Krushan got there. Ogunle can't get around the lanky Peterson. Savannah Belongia this drains the corner three. That was There's a wild things like that that can give a team like Champlain, Champlain Park a lot of confidence. Madden Greenway left that three short. And I don't hear any air ball chance this time. No. Um, if you don't know, you know what hey, we're, I'll hey, explain. Let's, let's remember, Maddie Greenway is human like the rest no, of us. There, there's a reason I made that reference, Alex, and it was the Stewartville game last weekend. Oh. She missed a shot. The Stewartville fans, they were getting at her a little too much in some cases but you heard the air ball chant and then Madden silenced them with a buzzer beater to end the as, first half. As he would, it would expect that she would. Now there's the second air ball this time from Ari Peterson. And I'm not about to start chanting air ball. <laughs> I'm not that foolish. But you know like Madden Greenway or Paige Beckers before, Taylor Hill. You might get some fans that try to psych her out. Oh, sure. But Madden, she's seen a lot, and she's got a big support network. But well, it's Champlain nice, Park off to a, a fast A nice start. start to the second half here by the Rebels. Greenway on a little give and go. Millerburn for three. Alex, if Champlain Park can get another score here, we might see another timeout from Providence Academy. But Natalia Tolentino never really got a firm control of that drive. Madden Greenway. <laughs> what? They call it a blocking foul and the bucket. You saw Greenway get rid of it just before she collided with a boon lay. That's, you know, that's just, again, that, that's, that's part of the that. IQ. Incredible IQ and skill set that Maddie Greenway possesses. You didn't get much of a reaction though, because I think everyone was trying to understand well, what just happened. I, I, th I thought that the, the officials had to kind of look look at each other and kind of figure out how they were going to call that, and then then you finally saw the a bit of a b little bit of reluctance, perhaps, but then the uh, <laughs> obvious. Uh, uh, well, you and I—I I know I felt the same way. I'm like, uh, what's going to happen here? Well, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Matt and Greenway gets a three-point play to get Providence on the board in the second half. Yeah. 
Cruzon escaping coverage, finding help. And Erin Calusa, that's her first bucket. Well, nice finish by Calusa there. Again, a pretty solid start here for Champlain Park in the second half. And Madden Greenway with the silky smooth pull up. But the, uh, the math is still working against them. If Madden Greenway's feeling it, you're right, math won't be in their favor. It's 49 30. Greenway, how about a three? Bullseye. How about a three? Madden Greenway has scored eight points in a row for Providence Academy. And is closing in on 30. Champlin Park called for the 10 second violation. Alex, I've seen quite a few of those 10 second calls. Yeah, we've seen some here earlier this afternoon. But of course you remember when we covered Providence Academy's game over at Matamita here last month we saw what their full court pressure can do to, to opponents. Yeah, you and I, we've seen, we've seen Providence a few times, the Dowling Catholic game, the Matamidi game. Honaker's three, short. A tussle for the rebound will go to Providence Academy. I'd be curious, and it's not one of those things that gets charted in play-by-play -play per se, but I, I'm curious if we're seeing more of that now that the shot clock is in play. Yeah. Hope counts, can hit threes. She doesn't go to it often, but it is a part of her itinerary. Itinerary. Belongia, that looks short. Kaluza can't save it. Madden Greenway, she's all alone. You know what's coming next. Greenway with 31, and Providence Academy in full command once again. Oh, counts. Can't get the finish, and it will go to Champlain Park. 57-30 the score. So Madden Greenway has now had Four straight games with 30 or more. She started the season with six straight games, scoring 30 or more. Had to leave early in the game against Hill Murray, and then was held to 19 in the loss to Albany. Greenway collecting the outlet pass, trying to draw contact, and does so. She'll shoot two. You know what, one thing, I guess there's so many things when it comes to her, but one thing that you really have to appreciate about Maddie Greenway is that she has this unique ability to put on that burst of speed right when she needs it. You just saw it there. She got the ball and she had to make, just get a little space. She put on a little extra burst of speed and that's just so incredibly cool to watch. It's that quickness, that agility, the swiftness yeah. Yeah, that's... that makes her so difficult. That's why that game with Albany where she was held to 19, that's about how you can stop her. You know you can't stop her altogether, but if you can limit her, that might be your ticket. As Tolentino, I believe, had that drive swatted away by Hope Counts. 59-30 the score in Champlin Park. Trying to get some momentum again. I know you and I are no strangers to this, Alex, with Madden Greenway and what she's done, but that doesn't make it any less fun to watch. 17-footer, swish, Natalia Tolentino. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Greenway for three. Well, she is human after all. <laughs> there are times where you think she's superhuman. And she very well could be. Here's a long three for Krushan. That's short. Peterson, no trouble corralling that rebound. Peterson, a little bit of a jam there, threw it away. 
Crushan to Tolentino on the outlet. Hezzy and the finish. We've seen these little spurts out of Champion yeah, Park. Yeah, Alex. we have. It's just they can't get on a sustained run. Greenway tried to sling it to Peterson underneath. Jump ball and Providence with the arrow. 12.28 to go in the second half, 59-34. See the St. Kate's players uh, starting to fil filter out of the locker room now. Well, they got a game in about an hour. Yeah. Beckett Greenway, her three, hits the front of the iron. Schaefer, not there. Pates back in, got the rebound, and is called for the foul. The double overtime game did push back things a bit, but I suspect they'll have enough time to do their warm-ups. Oh, yeah. I don't know if you'll stick around for that game, but I thought of you right away. Well, I, I, <laughs> I wish I could. I'll probably, I'll definitely uh, catch some of it online. Again, that's new for St. Catherine this year. You know who's really caught my eye for Champlain Park? Their sophomore uh, forward post, Reese Hagenbart, with the finish there. Well, she, she. I tell you what, she's going to be an important component for this Champlain Park team. She's a sophomore, and she turned a broken play into a pair. Hope counts. Sinks the elbow, Jay. Champlain Park. They're not folding up. No. Oh. But. That's a danger zone. Well, oh, extra pass. Hope Count that was a little fancy. Hope Count smelled that from the get-go. Madden Greenway could have taken it herself. Instead, she gave a friendly tap to her close friend, longtime teammate. The Greenways and the Counts. Oh. And Madden Greenway spreading things around. 65-36, Providence Academy back on a run. And Champlin Park gets called for another 10 second call. They just don't seem to have the poise, the wherewithal in some of these situations. Yeah. It's they, it can go on little runs, but Providence Academy then just too many reasserts control. Just, just too many weapons out there. But I like how Madden, well, she got that assist to Hope Counts and then followed up with a short-range jumper of her own. She's having a lot of fun out there. Fine, Schaefer has that knocked away. 10.52 to go. Madden sees a lane. Oh. There's that burst of speed we were talking about. That patented dribble drive. They bring the press again. Greenway one more time. Wow. Yes. All you can do is just sit back and just say, wow. Madden Greenway with that. Free throw goes to 40. You know what that means, Alex? Well, it means Providence will add a couple more here, but Madden Greenway wants an assist, and she'll get it to Shannon Healy. I was going to say, Alex, with that three-point play that Madden Greenway had yeah, a moment ago, that puts her at to 40. And for the sixth time this season, Madden Greenway has scored 40 or more in a game. Now, we've got free throws here for Savannah Belonging. She's got 12. Had that three to open the second half, but. Alex, you and I have been on hand now to see Madden score two of her six 40-point games. It's 
She had 40 against Matamidi. She had a triple-double against Hortonville. Ooh. One of the top teams from Wisconsin. Miller burned. Jump ball, Champlin with the arrow. We're not quite at the mercy rule yet. We've got to go to nine minutes before they run the clock. But a fantastic game for a fantastic player. And they're still pressing, even though they have the win locked up. Champlin Park breaks out of it, but they go for the mid-range J. I've never fully understood that. Madden wants another dime. Leslie Phelps, you hear her yelling, go. Now Hagenbart missing the elbow, J. Alex, the last couple of times with Madden Greenway, it speaks to her unselfishness that she's getting for 40 as Emma Milliburn cuts her way inside for two. Yep. She's gone for 40. It's her second straight 40 point game, but on the last couple of possessions, she was going for the assist. She wasn't yeah. going for the score. Champlin Park will take a timeout. I was just going to say on that last score there by Millerburn, you know, you talk about another one of those forgotten elements on this Providence Academy team. I would dare say that Millerburn fits that description fairly accurately. 9.01 to go. We're going to be in the Mercy Roll threshold here in a moment. And Providence Academy, 74-36. Matt and Greenway turning this game, much like Addie Mack did in our first game today with Osseo, into her own personal playground. Yeah, it's, uh, she's just, again, she's such, such a pleasure to watch and, and, and cover and to have the opportunity to know and, and engage with in conversation. She's just that kind of a, an enjoyable person to be around. And I suppose it's uh, an extra dose of sweetness that her parents went to the same college you attended. Yeah. <laughs> so you have another fun little connection. But it would be one thing if Madden got 40 and was taking a bunch of shots. She certainly has no trouble taking the initiative, seizing it but you still see her wanting to distribute. Well, Remember, she led the state in assists last year. Right, right. And that's, you know, you, you, we, we've seen that here this evening. You know, she gets her teammates involved. She knows where to get them in the right places, and, you know, they all contribute. So Matt and Greenway, who knows when she'll get to 3,000. It's expected she can get there sometime soon. They haven't tried to gauge when just yet. It all depends on how they do, and Providence Academy will take over as Champlain Park stepped on the line. You look at the Providence Academy schedule. Their next game is the second meeting with Minnehaha Academy. The following week, they have a couple of games that should be winnable. Madden Greenway. Won't get to 42, at least there. Buffalo, Minneapolis, Roosevelt, Buffalo, not really up to specs in the lake. They'll get Minnetonka at the Community Clash. Agunle almost broke ankles, but lost control at the last moment. Even Maddie Greenway had to smell on that one a little bit. Shannon Healy back out there, Madden. On the attack. Goodness. Goodness you gracious. Bet. <laughs> I see you're shaking your head because you're out of superlatives too, or, or at least have been for the last hour or so. It seems so routine, but there is a lot of repetition persistence yeah, so can see that. and determination to make this yep. possible. 43 points for Madden Greenway. Coming off 49 against Edina. 
these are numbers that I would see out of Rebecca Dahlman and Carly Wagner, but we make a lot of comparisons between now and then, Alex, and every era is different. Yeah. But I think what impresses me most about what Addie Mack has done and Matt and Greenway, they've been racking up these big numbers, and they've been doing it, even though they play for smaller schools, they've been doing it against a lot of high-caliber competition. Yeah, they, yep. Because Providence and Minnehaha, they schedule a lot of high-level 3A, 4A teams. Maple Grove is going to be on their schedule. Yep. That'll be a fun battle. Man, you actually kind of I tried to do a little too much here. Got herself into a bit of a fix. Well, Alex, if you're open February 2nd, I wouldn't mind having you for Providence Academy Maple Grove. That would be not uh, quite a Northwest Suburban game, but that, a that, couple that teams. Would be, that would be a fun one. A couple to teams do. that you are highly familiar with. Yes. And, and I think that's going to be the first time Jordan Odie gets to go against Matt and Greenway yeah, and that, the Providence crew. That will be fun to watch. And Jordan is no stranger to big numbers. Absolutely. But it seems so routine. That's why I was shaking my head. Usually I come up with some excited superlative or hyperbole to describe Madden's sometimes it's just limitless better, talent. But so, Sometimes it's just better to sit back and watch. <laughs> it's Madden Greenway doing Madden Greenway things. What more can I say when she does it so routinely and effortlessly? And Ari Peterson. I have a feeling we're going to hear big things about her over time. Here's a three. Remember, Ari had a big closing performance in that one over Dowling Catholic that you and I were on hand for. Emma Millerburn adding two more. We'll be out of here in five minutes. And St. Catherine won't have to worry about starting late. That would have been awkward. You get delayed by your own high school well, invitation. Especially with St. Mary's coming up all the way U.S. Highway 61 on the CPKC River sub main line. Belongia hitting the mid-range J, and Becca Greenway responds in kind. As we'll see the reserves take over and close this one out. It's always fun to see the unsung heroes get their moment. Bad in Greenway, she's done for the day. But Emma Millerburn isn't. Crushan draws a foul, she'll shoot two. Crushan came over from Park Center, and Alex, it's yeah. a little interesting. Park Center on the come up of sorts here. Yeah. Krushan made the move after the coaching change at Park Center. and I'm not suggesting that she made the wrong move or the right move. You, you just never know. But Park Center at 6-8, and eight, they're starting to turn some of those losses into wins. They beat right. Champlain Park by 43 in the most recent meeting. Tyler Coley's thinking, we could be a force in Section 5. We'll have to see how they fare against Maple Grove. Yeah, I, you talk but about Park Center. I always flash back. Those teams from like, you know, 10 years 10, ago, 11, 12 years ago. And, and Michaela McMorris, uh, Michaela Hayes, Hannah Schaub, Daniel, Daniel Schaub. Schaub. They won two in a row yep. in 3A, and they were a force for a time in 4A. That is Lexi Nikolai. And Alex, you and I saw this in the Matamidi game. Everyone cheering for the. Yep bench players, the ones that are always there for practice but may not get the glory. Becca Greenway wants three more. Bullseye. You know, and I talked about Brooke Honaker, and she's still out there right now. She really seems to be, you know, much of the glue for this team. You know, just kind of like the yes. way. Yes, I think you mentioned that Kira before. Is for Holy Angels. I mean, she's like the glue, the calm of this team. I think you highlighted that before. Shannon Healy won't get the three there. But it is an important distinction because 
I felt Brooke Honaker was the axe factor yeah. in all those years with Providence Academy. She is the player who could rack up big games, and you wouldn't realize it. Right. And she's come up clutch on more than one occasion. Yep. She's going to go to track. She's not going to stick around in basketball in college, but she's going to ride this out, and you like to see that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You like to see the multi-sport athletes stay with it. Well, and who wouldn't want to play with Madden Greenway for one more year? No, absolutely. I think she will we'll appreciate keeping all of her teeth this time compared to last yes, year at yes. this event. Ogunle to shoot two more, missed the front end. For Champlain Park, some teams can weather the transition well. Others, we've seen some bumps out of Champlain Park. I think they've got to stay the course. And it's hard when you're not competing in games that you used to, but yeah, you have to think for some of the younger faces, this will bode well for them experience-wise. And remember, it didn't help that one of their big sources of offense, Ava Holman, decided not to continue playing. So if you're Champlain Park, it, it's not the no one likes to be on the receiving end of a beatdown like this. Right. But I think for the younger players, they've got to, like Tony Ogunle, just hang in there, gather all this experience that can be applicable down the road. Kendall Jackson, another one. As time slowly you know, winding down. One thing I learned, you know, as, as a young athlete, sometimes you have to take those bumps. It's it's all part of the learning experience. It's never an easy or an enjoyable thing. You have to learn how to take those bumps sometimes. But you learn from them. Champlain Park, they have fielded some competitive teams and some high caliber, top class players over the years. This hasn't been the case this year. That's it. Providence Academy wins 88 to 40. And Madden Greenway shining once more 43 points. I tell you, just, just another uh, day where Madden Greenway does what she does. And, uh, you know, we see why Providence Academy is in the position that they're in. We'll try to get a word with Madden Greenway before we wrap things up. This is the St. Catherine MLK Classic. Providence Academy wins 88-40. They go to We're joined by Madden Greenway, and I do have to issue a small correction. I had her down for 43 points. The official scorebook had her at 44, so Madden, my apologies for shorting you a point. I guess, you know what, you score so often and so frequently, I can't keep track. It's hard to keep up with you. Yeah, well, I mean, this game was obviously good coming off Edina and then having this game and then obviously gearing up for Minnehaha. I think this these two games have just been used for confidence boosters and for me like I hadn't been shooting the ball tremendously well before Edina so to get these two games where I had been shooting it well and finishing and finding teammates it was it was fun. It's interesting that you talk about confidence booster because I've seen the resume the performance Providence Academy has put up and for a team that's 13 and 2 and their losses were close you yeah. could have beaten Albany and Hopkins it doesn't seem like you would have to worry about confidence, but what are you referring to exactly when it comes to that and having back-to-back 40-point -back games? How does that give you the lift when you're looking for it? Um, I would say, like, obviously you have, like, good wins and then you have, like, bad wins, if that makes sense. And we've had some wins where we come out of that game, like, with, you know, it might be a dub, but we don't really feel like we played as good as we can. So coming off of Edina uh, especially, we kind of had, it was, like, a good win, and we felt, everyone felt happy with how they did. And I think those are more confidence boosters because no matter, like, what the result, you always want to get better, and we feel like we've gotten better in these past two games. So just, and then coming off of those two games, like you said, we could have won. It's almost frustrating when you're that close but can't finish off. So I think we're just happy that, you know, to get two big wins, then hopefully on Miniha 
uh, close out the conference. So, yeah. Well, I think you, uh, with your family background, know how hard it is to stay undefeated. <laughs> That's really not the goal people are striving for. But at the midway point of the season, where would you say you're at in terms of your progression? Because you just picked up your six forty point game of the year. You had 49 against Edina, 44 tonight. Alex and I, we've run out of things to say. We've seen you do it so many times. It looks so effortless in doing so. But when you look at some of the accolades that you have put up this year, what do you make of this? Because this is almost insanity. I mean, obviously, I don't really realize in games how many points I'm scoring, but I just think coming off of the summer and then having starting off the season, scoring the ball well, and I just it comes from my confidence. And I think when I go out there and just play, like how I play, it kind of comes naturally. And obviously, having other teammates that can, you know, score the ball and like, do kind of everything, it helps kind of put some pressure off of me. So I feel like I don't know, it's just kind of come within our games. But you know, my coach Connor will always tell me if it's like too forced, but. So far, I just think it's kind of come with the flow of the game, but it's definitely helped me with my confidence. I think it kind of gets our team going. Now, was this the first time you sported the gold jerseys? It was. We got them, like, last week, and we were like, why not? So they were, they're, they're fine. You probably heard I was coming and thought, let's see if we can throw a wrench and see if we can fool him. No, <laughs> I tease. You could have threatened 50, but I saw a couple of times you gave up the ball. Actually, I think my favorite moment was that little give-and-go you had with hope. Yeah. Looked like you could have went for it after Hope got the steal and the takeaway. And instead, you're like, you know what? I don't know if you script that, but I'm guessing the two of you are going to have a little fun with that on the ride back. I know. I think in the second half, once we kind of got up a lot, we just tried to have fun with it because we have so many high-intensity games where, like Hopkins games, where you can't really have fun until after, like when there's a good play. So to have games like this where you can kind of, you know, have fun and laugh on the court. We try to, you know, it's supposed to be fun. No matter how competitive the games are, it's supposed to, high school basketball is supposed to be fun. So we try to, me and Hope always bring the laughter, so. I've been following your team feed on Instagram, and I don't think you have any problem with having fun. Uh, I don't know, is there a cheese it fun? Because I know Hope lost that box, and it took her a while to get over that. Have you started that yet, or? Yeah, we just, there's always a joke between us and Hope, and the, me and her run the Instagram, so it's definitely, we've been told we need to take it more seriously, but we're not going to, so. All right, so I better be careful then, uh, otherwise I might show up unexpectedly. Well, if I do, now I know who's responsible for it. <laughs> well, big game against Minnehaha coming up. I know that's going to be highly anticipated. And another big test for you. Uh, just what are you looking forward to in round number two? I'm just excited for a good game, obviously. You know, we played pretty well at their place, <laughs> knock on wood. But I think I'm just excited for a competitive game. And it's fun having double headers with our boys, just to be able to support them and yeah, I think we're kind of gearing up for that, and every we show up for that game no matter what, so I'm, I'm really excited. That much is evident. You have no trouble showing up no matter who the opponent is, and I think that's what makes you so fun to watch. Before we go, do you want to say hi to anybody? Uh, my dad, any friends watching, my grandma, so yeah. I know we're a few days after uh, his birthday, but yeah. that's right, he had it recently. Well, yeah, that's right, you played Friday, right? So you, Yeah, so you got 49, 44, uh, you really know how to shower him with gifts, don't you? Yep, I do it for him, so. Oh, okay. That's it, so that's why she got 49. Yeah. So uh, I'm sure he's enjoying every moment of this and it sounds like you are too. Thanks for stopping by and good luck Friday and good luck as the season continues. Yeah. Thank you so much. Matt and Greenway of Providence Academy and that wraps up our coverage here from the Butler Center. For the rest of our crew, I'm Mike Beaton. Thank you for watching.